Matthew chapter 27 Jesus brought before Pilate When morning came all the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about his death They bound him led him away and handed him over to the Pilate the governor When Judas his betrayer saw that Jesus was condemned he repented and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priest and the elders he said i have sinned by betraying innocent blood but they said what is that to us see to it yourself throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple he departed and he went and hanged himself But the chief priest taking the pieces of silver said it is not lawful to put them into treasury since they are blood money after conferring together they used them to buy the potter's field as a place to bury foreigners for this reason that field has been called the field of blood to this day then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah and they took the 30 pieces of silver the price of the one in whom a price had been set and who some of the people of Israel had set a price and they gave them for the potter's field as the Lord commanded me now Jesus stood before the governor and the governor asked him are you the king of the Jews Jesus said, "You say so." When he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, "Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you?" But he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge. So the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd anyone whom they wanted at that time they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas so after they had gathered pilate said to them whom do you want me to release for you Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the messiah for he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handled him over while he was sitting on the judgment seat his wife sent word to him have nothing to do with that innocent man for today i have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him now the chief priest and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for barabbas and to have jesus killed the governor again said to them which of the two do you want me to release for you and they said barabbas pilate said to them then what should i do with jesus who is called the messiah all of them said let him be crucified then he asked why what evil has he done but they shouted all the more let him be crucified So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing but rather that a riot was beginning he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd saying I am innocent of this man's blood see to it yourselves and the people as a whole answered his blood be on us and on our children so he really spared us for them and after flogging Jesus he handed him Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters and they gathered the whole cohort around him they stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him and after twisting some thorns into a crown they put it on his head they put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him saying hail king of the jews they spat on him 
and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head, they put the charge against him which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God, let God deliver him now, if he wants to, for he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, Lema, Sabashtani. That is, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, This man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah would come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice, and breath his lost. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two, from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him, who were keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly, this man was God's son. Many women were also there, looking on from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee and had provided for him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. The Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. He then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priest and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, 
sir. We remember what the imposter said while he was still alive. After three days, I will rise again. They will command the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people he has been raised from the dead. And the last deception would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard of soldiers. Go, make it as secure as you can. So they went with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone.